All right, there's a few ways uh, I'm going to explain this one. Uh, let's start with the first one. Okay, so first thing I'm going to need is a bar, and I'll explain what this represents. All right, so this bar represents the chances <clears throat> of having, and this is the overall chances of having uh, a kid, whether it be a boy or a girl, okay? So if we were to look at this and we were to cut this in half, all right, just like this, then this would represent for the first child, and I've done my best to get that halfway in there, okay? So that's for the first kid. So, but this is this is an event where three things are going to happen. You're going to have three kids. So if we look at the next one, we're going to have to say, well, uh, this was the chances that uh, it was a boy, right? So let's look at the next one. Okay, so that was the there was 50% chance there that it was a boy. Well, if we look at that, so that's the first one, then 50% of that would represent the chances that the next child will be a boy as well. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense to you. You can see that this first one was half of all of it together. And this other half would have represented the chances that it was a girl. Now, if we look at that, the third child, okay, would be half of that. So we're going to have to cut this in half and show that this represents the chances of having three boys uh, as triplets, okay, since there are 50% chances each time. Now, just real quick so you understand, this 50% was 50% of this 50%, and this 50% was 50% of the half that we started out with, okay? So it's half of a half of a half, and that would represent the chances <clears throat> that we're going to have three boys. All right, so how do we figure this out? Well... We started out with 50%, and then we had to take 50% of that, and then we took 50% of that. So when we multiply all these together, <clears throat> then we will have the probability that all three children will be boys. And if you did that, you'd get uh, 0.125. As a fraction, you'd get 1 eighth. All right, another way that we can look at this is uh, we have to look at how many children there are going to be. Well, triplets would be three children, okay? So I'm going to organize this in a much different way. And what we're going to do is multiply these together, all right? So what we have, what are the chances that the first child is a boy? Well, that's 50%, and I'm just going to make this as a decimal, okay? What are the chances that the second child will be a boy? 50%. And the third child will have a 50% chance of being a boy. So if we multiply those again together, we're just going to get the same answer. Now, still another way that we can represent this is to show that, again, we're going, there will be three children, right? And so we're just going to list the outcomes for each one. So the first child right here you can either have a boy or a girl, okay? And that will lead us to the next child, okay? So let's say that, again, we're just look, working from the boy perspective. Uh, well, what are the chances, what are the two possibilities that the next child has? Well, they can either be a boy or a girl, okay? And it works the same way with the girl. Uh, the next child could be a boy or a girl, all right? But we have to work our way over even farther, so let's clear some space here. And so if we look at this boy, there's going to be two more possibilities. Again, you've got a boy and a girl. And for this girl, you've got two possibilities. Again, a boy and a girl. And then from this one, you've got two more, a boy and a girl. And this last one as well. Uh, either be a boy or a girl, okay? 
Now, we're going to list these at the end here. And this is what we call a sample space. All right. So let's go ahead and write that in. All right, sample space. Uh, actually, there's probably more uh, and a more a more appropriate result uh, that we can write here. And then that's just use that word results here in instead of sample space. All right, so I am going to list these all. Okay, so we can see this top one. If we trace it back, we have B, B, and B. So the first one is B, B, B. The next one is B, B, G. And the next one is B, G, B. Okay, so we're going to B, G, B. And the next one as well is B, G, G. So B, G, G. B, G, G. And still further, the next one. Now we're on the... Notice all of these started with the boy, right? Because our first choice is the boy. Uh, the second choice here is a girl. So the next one will start with the girl and we can trace those. It's going to go G, B, B. So G, B, B. And you can look. Take a look at those and make sure that none of them are the same, right? None of those are in the same order. Uh, they're all different. And we have uh, all of them. None of them are the same, okay? So we're going to do the next one. G, B, G. So G, B, G. And the next one, G, G, B. So G, G, B. And finally, G, G, G. Okay? So how many possible results do we have here? Well, you can see that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight possible possibilities. And even if we were to look back at the first question here, uh, which was what are the chances that all three will be boys? Well, you can see there's one out of the eight possibilities where they're all boys. So that gave us one eighth. Well, this next one is asking what are the chances that we have at least one boy and one girl? So we have to find where there's one G and one B at least. Okay, so here's one that has at least one boy and a girl. This one as well. This one as well. Okay, because there's at least one boy and at least one girl. Okay, so here's another one. Here's another and another and we can't use this final one because there's no boys. There's not at least one boy, okay? So for the B, we can see that there were eight possibilities. And one, two, three, four, five, six of them have, a, have at least one boy and one girl. All right, well, what about C, where there's two boys and one girl? Okay, again, the order, it's not asking for a specific order. It's asking where there are two boys and one girl. So let's identify those, okay? Here's one where there's two boys and one girl. Here's one where there's two boys and one girl. Same here. And it looks like that's it. So for C, okay, how many possibilities were there? Eight of them, okay? And of those... Three of those eight had two boys and one girl in no specific order. All right, and finally, D, we want to know how. At, what's the chances of having at least two girls? Well, there's eight possibilities. This one has at least two girls. There's at least two girls. Same here and here. So it looks like there was four out of the eight, which we can reduce to one half if we choose. So of those three options, you get to choose which way you like to do it the best. All right. Um, I like having that uh, chart like that. That's what we call a tree diagram. And uh, it makes it organized. We can see 
that we can solve many different problems using the same diagram, whereas otherwise we have to figure out, okay, well, uh, how many girls are there, how many boys? So I'm recommending that you use that strategy. All right, so let's look at this one, and we want to find the sample space using this list. Okay, so it's not even finding the chances of uh, getting a mead with sourdough. Okay, and again, we we have to assume that all these can be equally likely chosen. So maybe it's a sandwich shop where they're like, "Hey, you uh, just take a risk on what you get." <clears throat> all right, so let's look. The first thing you've got is meats. And then you've got bread as well. Okay, so you've got meat and bread. And from there we will have our results as well. Okay, so we've got plenty of space to work with. Results is another way to say sample space. All right, so let's, let's go ahead and list the types of meats we have. We've got ham. And I'm just going to use the first letter because writing these out is going to make a difference. And they all start with the different letters, okay? So ham. If I have ham, what type of breads can I get? Well, I know I can get rye, I can get sourdough, or I can get white. Okay. Uh, what if I choose turkey? Well, as it turns out, the same ones apply. So you've got rye, sourdough, and wheat. Well, this gives us pretty easy results here, right? So I've got ham and rye. I've also got ham, sourdough. I've also got ham and white. By the way, wheat is healthier, but whatever. And down here we've got turkey and rye. And we've got turkey and sourdough. Finally, turkey on white. Okay. Bam. Six different choices there. And this is the list, by the way. We can just circle this and call this our answer. Now this compound event stuff is all the same. It's just, uh, instead of saying, we're just going to roll a dice and see, or a number cube, and then we're going to see what happens, uh, we're going to start doing many things, like rolling a number cube two times, or three times. Or maybe they'll roll a number cube and toss a coin, and then spin something, okay? Or they'll spin something twice, roll a number cube, and then toss a coin twice. That is a compound event. It's where more than one thing is happening. All right, so in this example, you're tossing first a quarter. You can toss a quarter, a dime, and then a nickel. And what are the two choices? Well, a quarter has uh, heads, then it has tails. Okay, and that's going to lead us to the next one, which has the same possible results. you got heads and tails. All right, and this will lead us to the final one over here. Okay, so I'm again, I'm using this tree diagram. I've got heads and tails, heads and tails, heads and tails. And I know this takes a little bit of time, but it will help you to understand the organization of all of this, all right? So it's good practice for you right now. In the future, you will know different shortcuts to use, okay? And finally, let's get our results over here. All right. So to start out, we had heads. So that's this one. Heads. And then finally, heads. Okay, well, what about the next one? Well, that was heads, heads, and uh, heads, heads, and then tails. Okay, and the next one down here is heads, tails, and heads. This one, heads, tails, and tails. The next one, tails, heads, heads, tails, heads, tails, and so forth. All right, so from this information, from this uh, results, 
Okay, and this isn't this is not something that we've actually done. So this is still theoretical. All right. So this is asking for a theoretical probability. What are the chances you get three tails? Well, there it is. There's one of them. Out of how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One out of eight chances that all three will be tails. All right, so in this example, first they're going to talk about gender. Okay, is it a male or a female? And the next choice we have is color. All right, so from gender, we have two choices. It'll be a male or a female. Okay, so if we split these off, how many different colors are there? Well, you've got yellow, brown, and black. So the same choices will exist for female. Yeah, yellow, brown, and black. So we need to list our results. Okay, so this first one, you've got a yellow male, you got a male that's brown, you got a male that's black, you got a female that's yellow, and so forth. So if we look at the number of outcomes, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay, so there's six possible outcomes, and what were the chances we get a female that's yellow? Well, that's this one right here. There's one out of six chances that it will be a yellow female Labrador Retriever.